At first glance, this equation might look a bit intimidating with its cube roots and fractions. But here's the thing. It's hiding a much simpler structure underneath. We're solving for x, where x to the one-third plus one equals six divided by x to the one-third. Before diving in, let's address the constraint. x cannot be zero. If it were, we'd be dividing by zero on the right side, which is undefined. Notice how x to the one-third keeps showing up on both sides. Whenever you see this kind of repetition, it's a strong hint that substitution will make your life easier. So let's give this repeated expression a name. We'll call it u, where u equals x to the one-third. Now watch what happens when we make this substitution. The equation becomes much friendlier. u plus one equals six divided by u. To get rid of this fraction, let's multiply both sides by u. And just to be clear, u can't be zero, which makes sense because x can't be zero either. Multiplying through, we get u times the quantity, u plus one equals six. Expanding the left side, we have u squared plus u equals six. And there it is. This is just a quadratic equation in disguise. Let's put it in standard form by moving everything to one side. So we get u squared plus u minus six equals zero. Now this factors nicely. We need two numbers that multiply to negative six and add to positive one. Those would be three and negative two. So we can write this as u plus three times u minus two equals zero. Which means u equals negative three or u equals two. And notice neither of these is zero. So we're good on that constraint. All right, we found u, but remember, we actually care about x. So let's substitute back. Starting with the first case, if u equals 2, then x to the one-third equals 2. To solve for x, we cube both sides, since cubing undoes the cube root. And we get x equals 8. For the second case, if u equals negative 3, then x to the one-third equals negative 3. Same process, cube both sides, giving us x equals negative 27. Now, it's always good practice to check our work. Let's plug these back into the original equation and see if they actually work. Let's start with x equals 8. Plugging in 8, does 8 to the one-third plus 1 equals 6 divided by 8 to the one-third? Well, the cube root of 8 is 2, so this becomes 2 plus 1 equals 6 divided by 2. 3 equals 3. Perfect. That works. Now for x equals negative 27. Does negative 27 to the 1 third plus 1 equals 6 divided by negative 27 to the 1 third? The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. So we get negative 3 plus 1 equals 6 divided by negative 3. Negative 2 equals negative 2. Great! This one checks out too. But let's visualize what's happening here by graphing both sides of the equation as separate functions. The blue curve is y equals x to the 1 third plus 1. The green curve is y equals 6 divided by x to the 1 third. Notice both curves avoid x equals 0, just as we expected from our domain restriction. The solutions we're looking for are where these curves cross. And sure enough, they intersect at exactly two points, just like our algebra predicted. There they are x equals 8, and x equals negative 27. The graph confirms exactly what we found algebraically. So to wrap things up, our equation has exactly two solutions, x equals 8 and x equals negative 27. Both satisfy our domain constraint, and both check out when we substitute them back.
What looked complicated at first turned out to be a friendly quadratic in disguise. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, consider liking and subscribing for more math explorations.